Hello and welcome to the Your Parenting Mojo podcast. And today we have a guest whose voice you may recognize. We are here with Kelly, who was on the show a number of years ago now in our episode on parental burnout. And she's here today with a big smile on her face, which you can see in the video if you're watching this on YouTube. So uh, things have shifted a little bit in the intervening years, and I'm sure we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. So welcome, Kelly. It's so great to have you here. Thank you very much. Glad to yeah. be back. And and where are you? You're sitting outside, almost outside somewhere. Uh, where are you yeah. in the world and, and who's in your family? Well, I live in the Netherlands. We live in the very, very south in a tiny village um, in the only, well, pretty much the only hilly part of the country. Lovely area, very rural. Um, and I live with my husband, two kids. Um, my oldest, Isla, is um, nearly six, will be six this summer. And my youngest, Ewan, is two, just turned two. Yeah. Okay. And so we're going to talk a fair bit about learning. And I wonder if you could start by maybe telling us a little bit about uh, what was what was school like for you? What was learning like for you? I assume you went to school and, and went through a traditional path that most of us went through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In the Netherlands, we don't really have that much choice. So um, yeah, I went through that regular path in a like a, a, a non-religious -relig school. Like there's a lot of religious schools in the Netherlands, but this was a, just a, like a public school. Um, I enjoyed most of it. I felt a bit, I, I was a, uh, what do you call that? A young student where you like, I skipped a class. Um, when I, I went to this, so group two, which is like, um, we well, then five, we were about five. I skipped that year or I went a bit faster. And from that, I was always sort of the youngest one in the group. Um, I wasn't bullied, but like teased for things that they said or did, or like I really noticed I was the youngest in the group and, and kind of an odd one out. Um, I did do enjoy it. Like I did, I enjoyed learning. I um, enjoyed playing with the kids. I had a lot of friends. Um, secondary school is a bit harder. Um, uh, okay, like school wise, academically, it was okay. I, I did my things. I got fairly good grades, especially when things interested me. I had like really good grades. I'm full in. Uh, if I didn't, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, I couldn't do it. Like history just didn't click for me, for example, except for one year where I had this brilliant teacher. You get the idea, like that, that really made a difference to me. Um, university was great as well. I just really enjoyed it. Um, if I had courses that I enjoyed, um, some, my first attempt at university, I enjoyed other things a lot more. Um, but generally, like I kind of enjoyed school, um, Except that, I, like I, um, I, I felt kind of out of place sometimes. Um, I don't know if that was because it was the youngest or just different. Later, I learned that I have ADHD, which may have like played a role in that as well, and especially that interest part. I figured out was a big thing. Um, so, but yeah, I I always felt quite okay with learning, and like I would find something if even if the text was boring, I would just find like I would practice my writing to make my writing prettier or something like that, or just cut out the picture in a different way or add some color to the pages. Um, but yeah, I guess I was fairly sort of clever, uh, so I just I got by enough. Like even with not studying, I got by. So yeah, yeah. and and you were rewarded with grades, I assume that it sort of kept the whole thing going. Yeah, it's good enough. And rewarded with things like I would find things that I would find fun or just observing those girls in class who were just more obsessed with their makeup and just seeing how they would interact uh, or things that I see now. I wasn't aware of it at the time, but I was mm -hmm. doing other things or. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. F finding your own entertainment in the class. Like we we yeah. I've just researched an episode on boredom and you were creating autonomy <laughs> <laughs> within an environment in which you didn't have much autonomy. You were finding interest in, in places where where you could find it, even if the, the material wasn't intrinsically interesting. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. OK. Although, and before we go on, I have to ask. I, you have such a strong Irish accent. I had no idea you were going to tell me you grew up in the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> How did that come about? <laughs> um, I grew up in the Netherlands. I was born here um, when I was 18. I moved to Ireland for a year. Um, my dad's Irish. My mum's Dutch. Um, okay. And my dad tried to speak in English with me for a while until I it was, I think it was about two. I ran onto the road and he said stop and I didn't stop right away and he gave up speaking English with me not realizing that stop is the same in English and Dutch so I'm not really sure where that story goes but that's the point that he gave up <laughs> and uh, he just spoke Dutch to me 
So, um, but I did pick up enough, like a lot more. And then when I was in Ireland, I after a few months, I said, uh, after a year, I said, I'm going home. And said, You're going home where? <laughs> to the Netherlands? Like, what? <laughs> You're not Irish. Like, uh, is, is it that like my accent? Is that is that truly Irish then? So apparently it was. But um, yes, it, yeah, and still is. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I hear I mix some people do hear the Dutch and then other people only hear the Irish. And yeah. Then, um, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. That that was that would have niggled at me for the whole conversation if, <laughs> if <laughs> I hadn't go. asked. Um, okay. So so you went through school and you found interest. You created essentially. You manufactured interest where where there wasn't any, and and that was enough to sort of get you through. What did you study in university? What was what was interesting to you there? Um, the year that I didn't do very well was applied mathematics. Um, after that, I, I did find some interest there as well, but those were not academically. Uh, um, I did have a fantastic year and I learned a lot. It's just not like enough to pass um, anything there. Um, then I went to Ireland and I traveled around for a while. And there I found out that I love a lot about like food and nutrition and like how people like just the habits that they have in each cult in each culture. Um, so I went on to study nutrition and health in the Netherlands, uh, mostly focusing on nutrition, a little bit of psychology around it, um, lots of like, like a body stuff. Um, then I went on to do physical activity interventions. And then I went into genetics and epidemiology for a PhD. And when I was totally, that was when I got into the burnout, <laughs> when I got the burnout. Um, and then um, now I'm in sustainability and in like <laughs> in the energy transition and climate change. So I've <laughs> kind of changed wow. my uh, path wow. over time. Yeah. yeah, very much so. OK. And so you mentioned the burnout and you confirmed with me before we turn on the recording that it's OK to, to talk about mm -hmm. this with you. And yeah. um, so I wonder if you can uh, draw any uh, sort of any ideas out for us to the extent that you see it between the things that were happening in what you were learning. Right. And your experience as you I mean, you were still in school at that point in, in very you know advanced school um, and and what your experience of burnout was like, what led to it and, and what it was like to be in there. Yeah. Um, looking back at the time, I wasn't aware of it, but looking mm -hmm. back, um, there was a lot of um, I just went with like, what does the teacher want for me? That that story, like I, I searched for that the whole time. And then the further you get, the harder it is to to just find that answer and, and be satisfied with that just like oh yes I got the right answer that the teacher wants and at some point that is just not interesting enough anymore it's like not rewarding enough anymore um the ADHD also played a big part in that that I just didn't understand and the system just didn't work for me like the way of learning it cost me a lot more energy than uh, than other people would have had uh, or at least many and just curious about the intersection of, of kind of being in school right the experience of learning and uh whether the extent to which that led to burnout or um sort of contributed to it or just mm. what it was you know what were the intersections between the learning and the burnout yeah I think it was very closely related to that I just um I just did what was expected of me over time I went through like I went through school I did the highest levels everywhere um I, I just did it without thinking about it and then I went into a PhD because hey I finished an academic studies that were very specific for research so I thought well let's do a PhD I was asked for a PhD that they wanted me so I well oh, I'll take the job let's go um and it just went from there and I just kept doing what other people expected of me and I, I just like as we say in Dutch I went past myself I just I left myself behind somewhere um, and that was like during that burnout. And when I, I needed to go back to work, I, I just realized like I was I was very close to going back to academia, actually, when I started working again. And then they said, no, we don't want you because you had a burnout here before. And that was the moment where I really realized, realized that, oh, this is not my place to be. This is just like I need I really need to start making decisions for myself. And that was hard, like after so many years to relearn that um or to to learn it maybe even like I've never thought about it before and uh, it's same with kids like they they want things from you and I just gave everything I didn't think about like does this meet my need in any way I was like now she wanted to to drink milk all night long until she was three years old and I was like this doesn't work for me so the second one he like at nine months I was like I can't do this anymore I'm going to choose myself now and that that's really that transition from before 
um, before uh, the burnout and after, because I had my daughter before and my son after, actually during. Um, very, very big difference there in um, how I approach stuff. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I mean, that's the the idea that this this is your fault in some way, right? Rather than this is the system that has taught you <laughs> over yeah. the years so many times through so many lessons you will deliver you will deliver you will deliver yeah and then for that system to say you know what you you're, you're not good enough for this <laughs> you can't survive in in this world and so you you're, you're the problem you need to go and find something else to do I mean that's just it's staggering yeah it really is yeah it's hard to think as well that now like there's nobody who can teach me like even if I ask around nobody knows because everybody's in the same boat and I, I just I, last week I said to my daughter I can't be an adult I don't know how, how I am to be an adult I don't know what this is so yeah I think I said that before that's kind of where I look to you uh, Jen <laughs> <laughs> you teach me to be an adult here <laughs> yeah this thing like how do you keep house and things like that like, I just mm. never learned it I just did what was expected of me and now I'm to find out for myself like Nobody tells me when to sweep the floor or when to do the dishes. Can I leave it for another day? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, and as scary as it is that someone looks to me to be the adult. <laughs> that was funny when you mentioned it on our group call. Um, so, okay. So so you you have two children. One of them is uh, is in school at the moment. And the other one is, is sort of heading in that direction, I think. And, and mm -hmm. so I'm curious as to the kinds of things that you had been doing to support their learning uh, up until we started working together. Yeah, so I um I, I I think I was always quite aware like that learning happens everywhere and um I would see a lot of learning going on, but I think at the same time, it's kind of hard to exactly bring it back, but at the same time I was still sort of going with like all these things that well, the regular school curriculum, I guess, and all these academic subjects, like I really tend towards um like they, she was three I did, it was um when Ewan was just born the youngest and she was walking around there and it was that, that um we get a nurse for the first what was it 10 days or something to help you after a child is born yeah it's brilliant it's really good <laughs> well if you get the right one it's good anyway she was walking around there and she, she comes up with two pillows and she runs into the room and she, she drops it on the ground and she screams gravity and then she ran off again and they were like she just really say that <laughs> like yeah she did <laughs> but it, it was like these things it, it does like those were the things that um I spent a lot of energy on and I was like she knew a lot about the body she knew a photosynthesis when she got like into it very deep but still she knew more about an average than an average child of three I guess um but then there's a lot of other topics that I wouldn't really see as learning or like social topics I wouldn't do as like now I know as a learning exploration where we where we sort of talk a bit more about it and, and really explore like oh what could this person think about it what could this person do what if you lived in a different situation and like just some perspective taking um I wouldn't do it that much it was more the academic stuff that I um focused on a lot mm -hmm. um but I always always had a big trust that she would learn what she had to learn at home um but just like with being home I would be confident to just leave her home except I, I find it so hard to be home with the two kids all day long like it cost me too much energy at uh, the burnout phase as well. I, ju I just wouldn't be able to do it. I, I like so much respect for parents who are home with their kids all day. Mm -hmm. uh, did it for two years. It's uh, this is better for me, let's say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I wonder. My own needs. It, yes, absolutely. Um, and I wonder if that impacted your decision around homeschooling, right? Because I, I think you are mm. not considering homeschooling. What was that decision process like? Was, was there even a decision process or was it you know, um, they're going to go to school? I I sort of I guess I made up my mind about it but I knew like regulations in the Netherlands make it extremely hard to do there therefore there's very very little community um I know and I know two families who homeschool or unschool actually and I talk with them a lot but if I see like how much they're struggling and they they try to live in communities and like a, in a sort of a like a communal living space with other families uh, but even that, like they had to move across the country to find a place where they could live in a in such a setting. 
and it, it's really hard. There's no groups where you can go to during the day because all the kids are in school. Um, they say it, it's it's very different, I guess. So it was never really an option. And to a degree, I think I've never been brave enough to even have this discussion with most people in my in my in my, in my family or my friends. They were just, what are you doing? And get so much critique is just not worth the energy almost. Like it just yeah. I feel like a coward in a way, but uh, then again, I know I would not be able to push it through anyway. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's too hard here in the Netherlands, I guess. Yeah. So then now I'm I'm really curious about you know obviously you look back on your school experience and you see mm-hmm. that it 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 sort of put you on the path to what ended up being a very difficult phase in your life. Um, and obviously now your daughter's in school already. And uh, do you talk with her about kind of the school system? They have these sort of macro level conversations. H- how do you uh, not make sure, but sort of. Uh, see the idea that the way that you went through school, um, which by all accounts, you know, from the outside, you were fine, you did fine, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> was not absolutely. necessarily the best one for you. So h- how do you talk about that with her if you do? Um, I do. I do. I do talk about it with her. Um, I did also explain my ADHD to her and how that helped me in school or not help me in school um things like that and just be open about it I wouldn't be surprised if she has well I'm pretty sure she's in some way neurodiver- neurodivergent it could be ADHD autism I don't know um we're, uh, we're going to get that sorted out as well and and just uh, what I see now at least in schools like I talked to this this lady who helps with learning difficulties yeah. uh, for the whole school and I was talking to her and I was like well should I tell the teacher even about my diagnosis of ADHD? Because then, like she bounces around the class. She's going to get that label, like even just in, in the teacher's head, maybe. And she said, oh, yes, no, times have changed since we've been in school. Like times are very different here. Um, teachers help kids in school all day, every day. Every class has some kids that get their medication from the teachers. They're very, very helpful. Um, we had some sensory integration therapy and this um, this physiotherapist that does it, she goes into the class and she actually worked with the teacher and with my daughter there. And um, she got gave a lot of advice also for other kids. So um, I, I got a really good feeling there. Um, like we live in a very rural area. There's not a lot of choice here with schools. Like we basically have two choices and one is a very small school. The other one is a big school. They had a focus point of uh, for gifted children. So it was like, okay, well, she's advanced for age. So, well, let's go with that school then because it's bigger and more chances of like getting the, the help that she needs. And they're very good. Like they do a lot of uh, like different levels within one class and they, they really try to meet the kids' needs. But still, it's like 32 kids in a class um I just keep her if it's too overwhelming for her I just keep her home and I call in sick it's not sort of technically sick you don't have a bug but I told the teachers like do you want to know do you want me to be honest or should I just lie and say that she's sick I, well if you don't go out in the streets then yeah do be honest and we'll see how it goes um and I did mention to the teacher as well like that I was very sure that she would learn everything she needed if she wouldn't go to school and didn't really get the best response to that oh but what about social stuff and they need to learn all these social things and I was like yeah and they learned that with all four-year-olds in the same class sure mm-hmm. I, I find that part but no I had really she is she's a really good teacher and uh, very very helpful um in many ways and I guess just being open about it helps a lot mm-hmm. and then to Isla I tell her um I, I do kind of I tell her about like um the, the, about how to work with the system that there is and how to play the game a bit um and if she says like I really don't want to do these things I, I I try to look with her like okay what is it really that you have to do and what where, where like where can we sort of move around it or anything but it's not that much because she gets a lot of play time in school still and it's not that much that she needs to do um it's more at, at home like she didn't want to practice anything for her book reading in class I was like then don't like I don't care you just do whatever you want to do um I was just curious I wanted her to do it at home because I wanted to see what she would do like I was just curious what it was like but not in a practicing way so sure we'll see what happens like she we'll see what yeah what goes on so, yeah uh, and even like that to- even that conversation of we don't have to do everything we're told right Mm. is is a really profound shift I think because when I was in school it was you know if it's written in your homework journal 
you're going to do it. There's, there's yeah. no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts here. There's no decision yeah. making. Um, it's just, if it's written down, you're going to do it. Uh, and so to have this conversation around what happens if we don't do it, are we okay with those consequences? If we are, then <laughs> is there a real reason to do it? If it's not meeting any other need of ours, um, I think is, okay. I mean, that just, just that by itself is uh, sort of is going to help her to be aware of her needs in a way that you and I mm. were not able to be aware of our needs when we were in school. Yeah, yeah. Nobody ever told told us about need, at least not me, about needs. Like I, I was having a conversation with her yesterday. Um, I promise not to tell anybody, so I won't go into details. But she yeah. she told me about something that happened in the, the after school care. And um, I said, well, if I can find out, because I turned it into a game so she was comfortable enough to tell it. Um, and I said, well, if if we can figure out exactly what happens and we can look at, OK, what is this person's needs that things happened with? What is your need in that point? And like what what maybe like what maybe has been going on? We can find a solution that works for both needs. And she's it's really like she really needs the help of a grown up to go through that process. Um, but if you help her go through that, she's like, oh, but maybe this person needs this. And then she, she comes up with these solutions to things. And I'm like, wow. I hope that her teacher realizes this approach because she discusses absolutely everything. We had a report chat with the teacher today and she says she wants to know why she has to do every single thing that she has to do. Yes, <laughs> not very handy socially, but yes, that's kind of like well, we need to find a balance, but that's a good start. Because mm -hmm. yeah. It's very strong, but like it's her, it's her nature in a way, but still it's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's very nice to... Um, to see that, that she has that approach just hope that she finds a socially acceptable way to um to to deal with that and that I guess that is the approach she was like she has to let go of that strong will that she wants that she wants something exactly that way mm, maybe she she can express it in a different way but I'm still like I'm still open to have that discussion and the problem so problem solving um but yeah I need to find out how, how to manage that with the teacher I'm not too yeah. sure yet yeah. And yeah. it'll come right as yeah. uh, right. you're you're negotiating this relationship with the teacher and um, and as your daughter is learning new ways of expressing things and and also separating what is her actual need from what is the strategy that she or the teacher has chosen to meet their individual needs. Maybe yeah. if we can yeah. kind of get underneath the strategy that I'm, you know, I'm getting attached to and the strategy the teacher's getting attached to, then we can find ways of meeting both of our needs. Yeah. Um, yeah 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 I mean that's, yeah, most that's of the time where we really fight it's like um I love what you're saying that's not a need that is what you want to do but it's not the need that's behind it but I really need to do build whatever if you <laughs> want to do something that with like tiny parts that our brother just knocks over mm -hmm. but I need to do that and I was like that's not your need sweetie this is your need to be with us yeah <laughs> okay 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 now we can now we can work with this <laughs> yeah or not but at least like you know you, you can find a solution that might work yeah. Better. yeah yeah so so the teacher's worried about this social social learning that's not happening when your child is missing days of school and your child is already starting to understand uh that people have needs underlying the strategies that you use to try and meet those needs and is starting to see how different people have different needs use different strategies i mean see they, me that's a thousand times more learning than she will get in a classroom of other four-year-olds <laughs> where nobody yeah. ever talks about that stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I'm, I'm going to say like, she does learn a lot in school. I'm, I, I'm amazed at the things that she brings home and, uh, and what she does there. Like it's, it's lovely to see. Um, but she does, uh, they did this, uh, she did do a lot of reading in school as well. And they practice reading there and today. Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, you're very advanced at reading it. Said, yeah. But I learned that at home. I didn't learn that in school this year. I was like, oh gosh. So I, I'm pretty sure they did a lot of like reading type of stuff with her, mm -hmm. even though she's only like in, um, she's in, yeah, we call it group two, but it's like preschool mm -hmm. still. Yeah. Um, and they're not supposed to read, but yeah. And she's no, but I learned this at home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> nice. And of course, in the learning membership, we don't focus really on like getting your child to read, right? On getting your child to do math. And um, mm-hmm. one of the, the group coaching calls that I remember most is when you were talking through a learning exploration you were doing with your child related to puddles, right? And and I think at the beginning, <laughs> you kind of didn't necessarily see, you know, my kids are really interested in jumping in muddy puddles. Where do I go with this? <laughs> How, what was that process like for you before we talked through it? And then where did your kids ultimately end up going with it? Oh, with the puddles. Um, yeah. Do you remember? Gosh, yeah, I do remember. Yeah, they still love the muddy puddles. Um, I just said, it's funny that you remember that one. I forgot about that one. Hmm. Um, <laughs> the, uh, my husband hates the mud in the house. He just, like, every time they go in the mud, they can you go out? You sort it out now. I don't want them in the house. Um, because it's just kind of sounds covered. Uh, mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, where do we go? The, um, I guess the most the, the most important thing there is just like embrace what is there and just work with it and see like sometimes I don't explicitly see what's going on and it's not this academic stuff that they learn, but it's more sort of getting a feeling for what happens in the world and like just the way that the, like when you jump in a puddle and there's all the ripples there it's not something that you can express in any way. And like, she's never going to tell me that that is what, what happened. But when I look at her from a distance, I, I see her like just putting her finger in over and over just to see what happens or just throwing something in and, and those type of things. Um, Yeah, I, I guess the, the, just seeing that learning happening just there and not just leaving it at that. That is, that is a big shift for me. It's just like, I, I don't always take it further. I'm terrible with the documentation bit. I just hate writing everything down and I just never get around to it. That is like one of my biggest struggles still. Um, But it's, uh, I I still have the feeling that they're learning so much from just letting it go and just letting it be and giving her some space. Sometimes I I stop my husband and was like, no, let it go. Look, look what she's exploring right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And he's starting to pick up on that as well. Just leave them. They're fine. They're fine now. She's just figuring something out. Um, That just that, few it just gives so much peace as well peace of mind yeah yeah Yeah. what kinds of things has she been exploring lately oh she's very obsessed with why one root is shorter than the other like one sort of diagonal root is shorter than the root that goes around um now it's not necessarily faster because that's that's like a a dirt road and the other one is just asphalt so it's it's not necessarily faster but it's um yeah it's, it's shorter and she just doesn't get it why it's shorter and she keeps asking um and i think it's related with um like when we go uphill why why like roads zigzag up a hill and why you don't go straight up a hill um all very similar (laughs) similar fields i guess um but the thing is she's been asking this for about a year maybe um and i keep forgetting I just can't write it down. I can't get to a point. I'm like, we need to get a map I and mean, just put a string on and measure it. Something like that. It's, it's so easy. Um, and I just keep forgetting. I just I feel so bad. Um, and yeah, so that that is really my weakness still that I, I just, I, maybe that's the ADHD brain when she says something. I'm like, oh, yes. And I got to watch now that I can talk to and makes notes for me. And it's still I forget. So that is... Um, uh, but uh, still a lot of like learning is happening on the go or other things that she loves There's a lot with plants and like edible plants mm-hmm. um and like uh, what parts of a dandelion you could eat or um uh, yeah things like that she loves and we've been making uh taking cuttings actually I didn't think about this before but these are all things <laughs> that we've been doing lately and just looking at how like raspberries grow where they're like how it goes from the flower to the to the raspberry itself and yeah things like that um there's a lot now and a lot of water play i think we were talking about like getting a new pool and it's like okay what what's in that pool and like with chlorine and chlor oh bacteria is a lot um like the creatures in her tummy that she needs to feed every night um we've been drawing them oh that's actually a learning exploration as well i didn't i don't do these things consciously anymore they just happen they mm-hmm. just sort of we made these drawings of the creatures in her tummy and, and we talk to the creatures in their tummy and they want different foods at different times and they, they're really starting to come to life and like this creature that she takes care of um and she loves that so like uh yeah it works mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah 
and, and it, what, what's lovely is it's so informal right it's so organic you know it's yeah. just we, we, she's there are raspberries and they're blooming now and <laughs> and so we're interested in that and how that process transforms from a flower into a raspberry I mean it's deeply grounded in her day-to-day experience right this is not you mm. reading books about things that are happening in far-off rainforests or um you know pl- places that she has no concept of what they're actually like this is I'm observing closely what is happening in my uh, in my immediate environment physically, um, mm-hmm. in my body, and as well, you know, when you're talking about needs, in my relationships with other people, and exploring those. What is my role in those? What is my place there? How what how what can I observe about the transition that I'm seeing? Uh, and that is such a a, a deep, profound learning and understanding to have uh, even though it's you know completely unrelated to a, a random list of facts that she might just as well easily be able to memorize yeah 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 absolutely because i didn't before you 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 asked me like what type of things have you been doing recently and it was just like, oh yeah we did that steam uh, a steam engine that we built yeah that's right yeah oh yeah and i could remember all the pictures that we took for the learning journal that was like one month that i managed <laughs> she did tell me is, is that Jen of the learning journal? So yeah. Will you say thank you to her that we could do that that time? It's like we could still do that, you know. Oh, can we really? Is that not finished yet? It's like, oh no. <laughs> yes, we can still do the documentation, but that was not the point of what I'm doing. <laughs> but, That's yeah, awesome. it's, it's just <laughs> very natural now. So yeah, her thank you there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 everything just happens now. It's um yeah, we don't do a form any formal things I might say sometimes like should we do a learning exploration about it and then nothing happens yeah. I think something happens but I yeah I just don't realize it so much yeah and that's okay right and, and different yeah. parents will bring different uh, abilities different desires to engage with this in in different ways I would say the number of people who document is is probably lower than the number of people who don't document and that's totally fine um, I think one one of the the strengths of documentation is firstly it, it records for your child to come back and be able to say yeah we did this thing and oh yeah mm. I believe that and I I know that's not true anymore <laughs> mm. and then it it can also give the parent a lot of confidence to look back in six months and say, oh, yeah, now if I was doing it, I would do it this way. And I know that my child mm. would be able to explore this other thing because I helped to you know, set that process up. Um, yeah. And and so it helps you to track your learning. But it's in no way required. <laughs> you're, you and your child are still firstly engaging in deep learning and secondly, deepening your relationship and your connection with each other, mm. whether or not that documentation is taking place. So, yeah. If, yeah, if that can oh, absolutely. Some of the guilt that I am sensing is there. <laughs> <laughs> I've accepted it by now that that documentation is just not going to happen, <laughs> <laughs> and that's totally fine. <laughs> so, um, yeah. is there any any place that you've just felt stuck uh, in in relation to supporting your child's learning, and how did you get unstuck? Um. Yes. I well stuck frustrated more like um at the beginning I was like but we're, we're not really done yet we didn't get to the conclusion of what you're supposed to learn from this I was like the whole, well, the whole chapter that is in that book in school we didn't get to the end of the chapter yet and that was so frustrating and then she went on to something else I'm like should we finish this tomorrow then like, no it's good it's good mom I'm, I'm done so, yeah but and then I just started to explain like kind of the conclusion I think this was about like uh, this exploration about being a scientist which is like a kind of a trap uh we talked about that as well like me knowing exactly to what point you're going to get uh, if you did the whole like um scientific cycle um and uh later I, I don't know where it came from but it was one of the first modules somewhere was about like you don't need to finish everything and that, that was that that was something that you learned from school and I was like what wait what but like my life was upside down and you don't have to finish you know you mean I can just throw away like this puzzle book and I, I there's like three puzzles that I didn't do yet but I don't want to do I don't actually have to like put it in the toilet so that every day I can just do at least one word so I can throw the thing away and I was just, what, what am I doing <laughs> what is this? when I realized that I was like what I've been doing all my life <laughs> that was um I don't know I, I don't know I didn't do anything to get unstuck it just sort of happened um and I saw a lot of things that happened in my life where I was like yeah that was 
so profound. And then there was one other thing. I managed to pull that work in the system um, and like playing the game to other areas as well. And and just sort of um, one of the favorite sayings of my husband, if you can do it as you're supposed to do it, then just do it the way you can do it. Now that works out really well in Dutch, but it's um, it's it just sort of it, just do whatever way you can do it. Like if, if it works, it works. Very pragmatic, I suppose. And um, yeah, I, I, that just helped me so much to, to look beyond, okay, th- like these are the things that we're doing. And if you then, if I want to make it work, but I can't do all these things, like ADHD brain, you can't do half of the things you want to do. Um, if you can find a system to make it work, and if, if that works for you, who cares what other people do or what other people expect of you? And that that's changed a lot of, um, I just can't think of a very explicit place where I changed things but I guess I guess in work as well like just that shift that I uh, that change that I made in in my job going to totally different like I'm doing a totally different job now um but I'm I'm still like it works for me who cares I did an academic education who cares and like yeah I don't use that PhD stuff in in a way but I I'm enjoying myself life works <laughs> no yeah yeah that that PhD stuff <laughs> 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 yes um and i and and what you're saying is you're essentially learning as an adult how to uh not believe everything you learned in school and that yes we learned some valuable things in school and also uh when when we think we must finish something there is there is no <laughs> alternative other than to finish something and to do it in the way that you've been told to do it <laughs> that sets us up for this huge cognitive dissonance as we go through life with you know mm. puzzle books not getting finished <laughs> and and that that being a tiny example of of things throughout our lives that don't get finished what if mm. there's no need to finish the puzzle book <laughs> yeah. wow yeah I, just put, I threw so many books away that I never finished, well, or I, like I gave them away. I was like, I'm not going to finish them. Mm. Give them to somebody else. There's no point yeah. in in like keeping them if I don't want to finish them in the first place. Yeah. Just because I bought them, it doesn't mean I need to finish it. Mm-hmm. And that's um, that's like I wouldn't say it was. I realized that I was stuck, but these things have really helped me to ease everything in life. Basically, mm-hmm. like that that moves on to like even to housework or jobs that I do, or um, had this um, uh, this coaching um, uh, training last weekend. And I, I was, for the first time, I was at home doing it virtually. And I was just, one thing I'm going to learn today is how to be at home with like two kids and a husband getting into fights all day. I can hear them through the floor. We've wooden floors. I'm going to hear them. One thing I'm going to learn today, if it's not the exact contents of what we're learning today, is that how to deal with that. And just accepting that, that, that I'm not learning every single bullet point in that, that guide that we're using. Wow, that was so good. <laughs> but, yeah. Makes life so much easier. Yes. Yeah, for sure. So I'm wondering now how you feel about your role in your child's learning and your ability to support their learning. Yeah, I, I, um, I guess a lot more relaxed, a lot more free. And just letting things happen and giving her a lot more space to just um, to make mistakes as well. To just sometimes just, just let her totally fail. Um, and and that's that's a lot more learning. Like that steam engine. Now, that was a, a bit of a like a f- more formal learning exploration where I really, like I said, OK, let's do a learning exploration. It was fantastic. But the, all the glue melted. I could have known it was hot glue. Hot glue gun doesn't like it melts before 100 degrees and so the whole thing like literally the whole thing fell apart uh, when we put a candle under it but that was brilliant because we like the fact that that glue where the glue melts that stuck with me so much more than the fact that if it would have worked and that, that little mill that we made would have spun and then yeah okay next uh, did this we really learned a lot more so just to be a bit more relaxed with failure and and seeing what you can learn from that um uh to myself but also to the kids like now it seems as if everything's going great that's not like that like sometimes I get just so frustrated after like the 10th time and she still doesn't get it but it <laughs> and this by, I'm by no means a perfect parent at all or even a great parent but I'm just yeah a lot more confident and relaxed about 
um, even though I was sure she was going to learn everything, this was more like she's going to learn what she wants to learn and what she needs to learn. She's not going to learn everything. She's going to learn what she needs to learn. And I think that is the biggest shift that I made personally in my mind. Um, even though she's going to, school's going to push a lot of like things that she has to learn on her still. She's going to learn a lot of other things that are going to get her so much further in life. Um, yeah. It's, uh, and a lot of perspective, thing, like taking things. Um, uh, oh, gosh, I can't read the Enid Blyton books anymore in the same way after you said like oh, <laughs> the, the white supremacy in there. And I, I spoke to her about it as well. It's like, um, did you notice that the bad guy is, is like usually not like a normal person like we look? And we talked a bit about like kids in our class, like we live very rurally. So there's very few kids that look very different. Um, and and we talked a bit about that and it's just like you see it showing up everywhere and I I could take it to work as well and and like I might mention things this morning we were talking about buying land and how could you how could you just buy that from Mother Earth that just didn't just still doesn't work in my brain um, and like I would never have talked about those things with my four year old I would have talked about like well maybe mortgages or with I I don't know like these formal things that you yeah think of numbers exact or more exact things mm -hmm. so um yeah it's been very um a very different approach and helping her with all those things like uh, hopefully at some point she's gonna feel okay to be an adult who knows <laughs> i mean what i hear is your values are coming out right it's not just facts yeah it's what's important to me how do i view the world um what, what ideas do i think are really important and that you're now having conversations about those yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I should not never thought about it that way, but I think you're right. It's about, a lot more about, um, yeah, even with, with, if it would be a steam engine, we could talk a bit more about like, okay, what's, why did we even make a steam engine and why do we need to use these things and why do we need to produce more? And the story would go in a different direction than the technical details that it would have gone to over and over, I think. Um, yeah more about yeah my person i get very frustrated with the world and uh as in and like sustainability uh point of view and um I'm like how are we to do this as this one little family how would like i try not to let her have our waste water but still she needs to learn certain things here and there as well and, and finding that balance um i definitely still struggle with um but it, it's more about like what i find important to do rather than um yeah, facts and figures, yeah. Yeah. If you could leave yeah. parents with a piece of advice when they're thinking about supporting their children's learning and they're not really sure what to do, how to approach it, what would you tell parents to do? Have that faith in that your child will get there. Just that, that peace and calm. I hope, like, it, it, I really needed those insights to get to that point. But if I could just send it to other parents, I would love to. I don't know how, but I would love to send it to them that they have that faith um, and that confidence that their child is going to learn what they need to learn for themselves. And maybe not to be a fantastic adult, um, but to be happy in life and to be good with other people and sort of, yeah, to, to be a... A good citizen citizen of the world i guess um whatever that means to everybody uh yeah but that 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 relaxedness ra re relaxedness i was just getting late about about how how things are going to go it's going to be okay and just enjoy how your child is that little scientist and, and play along because <laughs> i i had so much fun with some of these things that we did like um yeah just go along with it yeah enjoy it if you can Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much for being here and for sharing so much about your experience. It's so lovely to kind of close the loop with you, as it were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Back around and, and see you in a very different place in life. So thanks so much for being here. It was great to see you. Again. Very welcome. Thank you, too.